You know, I, I don't want to feel uncomfortable talking to my physician about my husband, the fact that I have a husband, the fact that I have hepatitis C, which is the fact that I'm, I'm a gay man. I want to know that uh, one of the most important people in my life, my physician, is totally cool about that. And I, I know I'm going to get that at Fenway. We're going to see you no matter if you have a dime or if you have a million dollars. We're going to see you no matter what race you come from. We're going to see you no matter what your sexuality is. And it's going to be without any judgment because we're all inclusive, we're all accepting. All of our research points to the existence of an extraordinary number of health disparities health concerns and conditions for people who are LGBT that heterosexual people just don't face. The point of Fenway is to address these disparities, eliminate these disparities, and work to make sure that everyone has uh, the health and well-being that all people deserve. The Life Schools Project is a really exciting project. Um, it's a study of young transgender women to test whether um, this program would uh, be effective at um, preventing HIV. We just finished a feasibility study here at Fenway, uh, Project SOS, which was a feasibility study trying to understand the sexual behaviors of black men who have sex with men. We represent 13% of the population as black men, but we also represent almost 60% of the new infection rates of HIV and AIDS. So I know that there is a disconnect in my community. So this was a two year study. We have since finished this, this uh, study and you have seen just, you know, the, the fruits of your work when you see people coming in that have, that wasn't connected to care. They are now in care, they are doing well. I'd say that Fenway is one of the leaders in the movement a growing movement to address the needs of LGBT elders. I know Fenway is having an impact because they're offering services for older LGBTs. And we were brought in to train healthcare providers in Malawi, doctors, nurses, lab technicians, um, educators, on how to care for men who have sex with men. The challenge was in a country where uh, being gay is illegal, it, it would be very hard for, for gay men to trust uh, going to a healthcare provider or to disclose the, their risks. So some of the pure health educators volunteered to be fake patients with the clinicians and they were pointing over at us and then finally one of them said, you know, he wants to know if you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, of course. And, and it, it was as if they were just transformed and, and they were in total awe that, that Kevin and I as out gay men could be professional. Well, Fenway Health is, is I'd say foremost, it, it's probably one of the best health centers for people who are transgender in, in the country. And it was really, um, I think, a critical step in my transition to be able to meet a transgender health navigator and find out where to go. Our protocol for care at Fenway um, is based on um, what some people might call an informed consent model. It's really a, a minimally invasive process that we don't demand that people spend a lot of time in therapy if they, it's not needed, just to access the care that they need. We don't, we don't expect people to, to um, have their lives completely in order before they're able to express who they are. This is our history. These are the people whose lives have been touched by Fenway in some way or another. And it's important for us to recognize and remember the names of the people who are up here and the many others that passed away of HIV during the darkest days of the crisis. When it got really difficult in the late 80s, early 90s, Fenway was always there to, to guide, to hold our hands, um, to bring us you know, to the hospital, uh, to consult through medications, bad periods, and good periods. I, I feel like I owe Fenway quite a bit because I have half a dozen friends that were cared for through the system um, all through the late 80s and early 90s. AIDS is not, um, it's not a death sentence anymore. Uh, you know, we, there are a lot of medications there to prolong your life. But then again, there's no cure and it's really important for us to really find this, uh, the cure for, for um, HIV in particular. What I particularly enjoy is getting to know people over time. 
so that when people's decisions become more complex, either just because of aging or because of some acute medical change, I have a sense of where that fits in their context as a person over their life. I don't just know them as a sick person with their diseases. Fenway Health is about opportunity. They go that extra step. And it's important to have that in my life because I love me and so I feel that Fenway brings that care. I think Fenway Health matters because it's a beacon in a really harsh world. You know, this is a place where, where we matter. Fenway Health to me is security in knowing that my totality will be not just tolerated uh, or not just respected, but will be affirmed.